Hi there and welcome. Today we're looking at the Regal located in Wyndham, southwest of Norwich, Norfolk. The Regal Cinema was opened on the 18th of March 1937 with Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers in swing time. It was part of a local circuit operated by Douglas Bostock. The architect was J. Owen Bond of Norwich and the builders were Thomas Gill and Son, also of Norwich. The cinema had 503 seats, all finished in a lovely moquette with luxurious padded armrests. Axminster carpet was fitted throughout the foyer, aisles and the front of stage. Manager of the Regal was Harold Crane and in November of 1937 he started the Chums Club, Saturday afternoon club for children. There was no membership fee Admission was either tuppence or threepence. Everyone got a membership card signed by the chief chum, Mr Crane. The chief projectionist was Bert Cayley and he took over the manager position in 1941. Now in 1962, after three years running at a loss, Douglas Bostock decided to close the Regal and it duly closed on Sunday June the 17th 1962 with a screening of For the First Time, starring Mario Lanza. Staff quipped that it should have been For the Last Time. Three years later, Norwich businessman Roy Dashwood bought the building and the Regal reopened on Friday, April 30th, 1965, with the Beatles in A Hard Day's Night. Bob Harvey was installed as manager and chief projectionist, with Les King, a former boxer, on the door to keep order. In 1967, Les King became the manager, and in 1969, a large cafe and disco were added on as an extension to the cinema on its own site. To attract patrons, Les King introduced king-size gimmicks, like a dog's night for well-behaved pets and a courting couple's night where the ladies were admitted for free. And his discos in the adjacent club room became famous, with groups like Slade playing gigs. Roy Dashwood closed the cinema again in 1976 because of falling attendances. In January 1977, the whole complex was bought by Wyndham and District X Servicemen's Club, who turned the disco and cafe area into a club room and leased the cinema back to Les King. And on January the 23rd, 1977, the cinema opened again with Airport 77. Les King operated the Regal successfully for the period of his lease, ever the showman thinking of new ways to keep the cinema alive. His greatest success though had to be persuading the pilot of the Sally B B-17, the actual plane used in the film Memphis Belle, to fly over the cinema during the Regal's run of the film. How about that for a coup? But Les King did not renew his lease at the end of the term, and the Regal Cinema was closed again on the 28th of June, 1993, with Kevin Costner in The Bodyguard. Now the home of the Wyndham Ex Servicemen's Club, the building still possesses its original Gaumont K. Lee 12 projection equipment. The projection room is a real sight from a bygone era, and I really enjoyed spending time there in the company of Philip Yaxley and David Oldfield, the Regal's unofficial historians. The ex-servicemen's club levelled the floor of the Regal to allow dancers and private functions to be held. They were cautious though to maintain much of the original fixtures and fittings, including the original screen curtains. Much of the preservation work was thanks to the influence of one man, and it is due to his hard work and others that the Regal continues to thrive in a rather unusual and special way. So I suppose we'd better spend a couple of minutes talking about what happened next. Michael Armstrong At age 11, Michael Armstrong moved to Wyndham in 1957 and the Regal Cinema became his second home. He loved to watch the projectionists at work and on Saturday nights would go and fetch their fish and chips. He went on to deliver advertising leaflets and help with projection. For years too, he was a great support to Regal manager Les King. He amassed a huge collection of posters, one of every film screened at the Regal since his very first visit. When the Regal closed in 1993, he had the garage at his home converted into a replica mini Regal, 
with memorabilia that he had saved from the building which he feared was going to be demolished. In 2000, a seat was installed in Market Street, Wyndham to commemorate the Regal, paid for by donations from Michael's guests to his cinema, and 40s film star Gene Kent unveiled the seat. In the year 2000, Cinema City, the Art House Cinema in Norwich, were looking for redundant cinemas to hold one-off screenings to celebrate 100 years of cinema in Norfolk. Michael and his friend Philip Yaxley screened the Titfield Thunderbolt and it was such a great success that they decided to hold further shows. They founded the Regal Experience. They and their team staged classic Sunday afternoon film shows in the Regal and raised large amounts of money to help charities and good causes. In the picture here, June Whitfield is with the Regal Experience team members. From the left, Les Woods, then Philip Yaxley, Michael Armstrong, Maureen Dodman and David Oldfield. The Regal Experience classic Sunday afternoon film shows were all sellouts and attracted many other stars to the town. Listen to this list. Sylvia Sims, Dora Bryan, Virginia McKenna, Susan Hampshire, Muriel Pavlo, Peggy Cummins, Dora Bryan, Rita Tushingham, John Layton, Sally Ann Field, Frank Williams and many more. Even Fred Astaire's daughter Ava made personal appearances. And the stars also visited Michael's Mini Regal, which it is said they found truly magical. Then came the trips to Hollywood, where the Regal Experience team were welcomed with open arms. Although Michael found it difficult to get about, his courage and determination was applauded by the stars, and when he met Tony Curtis, who was also in a wheelchair at the time, he challenged him to a race. The likes of Debbie Reynolds, Angie Dickinson and even Richard Jaws Keel loved meeting Michael. The team even spent an afternoon with Jean Simmons at her Santa Monica home. Back in the UK, stars such as Richard Todd, Michael Craig, Sir Donald Sindon and Julie Christie welcomed them to their homes. Any profits from Regal Experience shows went to charity and Michael as chairman and treasurer loved handing over the cheques to help others. When Born Free was screened with the star Virginia McKenna present, he handed over a cheque to help the Born Free Foundation in front of the TV cameras. The 11-year-old who helped fetch fish and chips for the projectionists had come a long way. Michael Armstrong passed away in 2020 at the age of 73. Let us hope now that the Regal experience continues to keep the Regal alive in the future. Well, that's about it for this one. Join me again and in the meantime, please like and subscribe if you want to and feel free to leave a comment below. Till next time, be good to each other and I'll see you soon. Ta-da!